Signature Morning and this is Signature TV. Uh, we've been talking about different things, discussing issues, you know, uh, happening around. Now we're going to shift focus to talking about ASO, uh, legations of ASO to, to a World Bank and IMF of destroying universities. And to talk about this and discuss it is Mr. Chine Du on former Board of Trustees member, Tertiary Education Trust Fund, Debt Fund. He is right here in the studio. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, I'm Chine. We're doing great. How are you doing this morning? I'm good too. I'm good. You're not looking like the economic hardship is staring at you. Well, I don't is there need, any secret I don't, I don't you need, need to, to know? I don't need to wear it. <laughs> okay. So what do you make of ASO's allegations toward bank and IMF? over destroying varsities? Um, let me start by saying that um, Nigerian government mm. should be blamed and not World Bank and other Britain Woods institutions. For Nigeria to accept um, IMF and World Bank policies that is adverse to their citizenry, is not the problem of World Bank or IMF. It's rather leadership failure in Nigeria. Because I know that um, IMF and World Bank also extend these policies to other countries, to Arab nations, and they don't take it. Each time I discuss this issue, the late uh, Gaddafi comes to mind. He has never agreed on any policy from any of those nations and he ran his country effectively well. So it's not a problem of World Bank or IMF, but a Nigerian problem. Why will Nigerian leadership accept policies that will adversely affect our citizens? That's the question. Uh, if I want to say it in Igbo, I'll say that what killed them is not the pot, but the knife. The problem they have is not IMF or World Bank, but Nigerian government. There is no single IMF policy and their conditionalities, even during the era of SAP, Structural Adjust Adjustment Program, or that, that will ever be positive here. Their emphasis is on privatization. They have forgotten that education is a, is a social service. So I want to begin to say that ASU should learn to face Nigerian government and not World Bank. I'm aware that recently the federal government wants to begin to provide education loans for Nigerian, Nigerian institutions. Students. What has ASU done in that? ASU, just like, of course, Tet Fund as it is, was a creation of the struggle between federal government and ASU. ASU brought Tet Fund, and Tet Fund is the best thing that has happened in Nigerian tertiary institutions till date. So, the same way the government wants to come up with student loan, ASU should embrace it, work with government and get sustainable implementing implementation dynamics for that school loan. If the government provides these loans to the students, that means they're paying the students tuition. Therefore, universities can charge anything and government will pay for it. That will provide for need for the university. Um, I want to ask, how do the World Bank and IMF policies directly or indirectly have impact on the quality of education in Nigerian universities? It is not only in Nigeria University, it is affecting the entire economy. When World Bank and IMF advises federal government to remove all subsidies, to privatize, as against public funding of institutions, of course, it creates high rise in the cost of education. It affects the funding lines for research. A whole lot that happens in Nigerian institutions will be crippled because there is no funding. There is no way Nigerian government should accept to remove subsidy in education or to, be, to reduce the, the, uh, the subventions meant for the educational sector and expect that sector to survive. It is not possible. Okay. Do we have cases where other countries have, you know, have similar policies and how it has affected them? If you the go past? to South Africa here okay. and India, they have a, a mixture of private and public funding okay. for their own institutions. 
In Nigeria today, I know there are private universities, there are faith-based universities. But these organizations run independent of government. But the ideal thing will be for government to have an integrated system whereby government will find funding lines for these institutions. Again, you cannot begin to talk about funding without also looking at what happens in our universities. There is endemic corruption even in the university the system university. itself. Currently, there are issues between the federal government and us over the implementation of I IPPIS because government wants to comprehensively have the payroll of these universities known clearly by them. But the ASU, they are resisting it. Because when that, when that happens, that means government will know the enrollment in the school and will determine the amount of money they, this will they, pay. they know. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But government cannot grant autonomy to university and still want to control them. Okay. So there must be an understanding between ASU and government. ASU insists on their autonomy. Insofar as you don't get involved in the day-to-day -day running of the university, they are happy with the autonomy. Mm -hmm. But they are not interested in government withdrawing their subventions. If you want to be autonomous, autonomy. have 100% autonomy. They don't want it. But the truth remains that there must be some form of funding from federal government to be able to have a robust educational system in Nigeria. University. Universities today receive funding in form of grants from federal government. The question is, how many of these Nigerian universities today get funding from research institutions or mm. get grants for their researches in their schools? Before the low-cost invasion of the ivory tower, most universities, even though they don't run independent of federal government funding, but they also on their own generate funds. 80% of researches conducted in Nigerian universities today are all theory. True. There is a disconnect between the curriculum and the industrial needs in the country. Emphasis should be on R&D, research and development. The universities should begin to attempt to answer production challenges of industries in Nigeria. Mm. The education task fund are tax paid by companies in Nigeria. How has it, that is that fund is what the government used to fund tertiary education okay. trust fund. Therefore, if this money are generated from industries, I expect that the universities now should sit down and interface with these industries, identify where they have production processes, and do research around them to solve these their problems. Because see, who pays the piper should dictate it to. Mm. These industries are funding them through tertiary education trust fund. Let them ask these industries, what are the production processes, challenges you have, so that we'll do researches around it and provide solutions to them. So it be it, it has to be a... There must be a, a reciprocal yeah. adjustment. We are paying you. We need A, B, C, D. But every day, we we'll continue to do research, theoretical research. They finish theory, no implementation, no practical. How many Nigerian universities today are getting products patented? How many Nigerian universities, through their research activities, have innovated or introduced a new thing? These are the questions. Um, in, in other climes, okay. universities are funded not by government, but by grants, professors and researchers attract to the university. These are lecturers, those with PhDs and professors, let them also make efforts to begin to attract this research grant so to, it, their, it, it, to their it, universities. So looking at this uh, explanation now, it does look like that. It does look like uh, the problem is a problem of the universities, not no, attracting points for, their, for their research. There is a system failure. There is a systemic failure in the entire country. Mm. The blame is not squarely on ASU or on government. Its blame should be apportioned to each of them. There is some level of interference from government that is not needed in the universities. Through you, uh, using the IPPIS, the government wants to even employ staffers of the university. It is wrong. 
it is the university that knows who they want to hire, when they want to hire, and what to, to pay. In IPPS, as proposed by government, payment of professors at same fund. But it is not so. Every professor is supposed to negotiate their pay with any university he or she is going to because he or she knows the value she's, he or she is Bring bringing in. to the table. All professors are not equal. There are prolific, research-minded professors that can attract grants to your school. So you don't pay him the same thing you are paying to another professor that's not bringing anything to the table. So in terms of autonomy, we still see the hand of government in universities. Mm. Just today, we had uh, uh, news from one of the headlines that the federal government has sacked UNISIC uh, chancellor, chancellor and registrar. So, in your own opinion, do you think that should be right coming from the presidency himself? Well, the truth is, I don't know the acts establishing Namjazikwe University. If I know the law, I'll be in a position to appropriately respond to this. However, there are processes of selecting vice chancellors. If I know their acts, I will have said that the current or the, the sacked council had followed it. If they have followed the process, federal government has no business sacking them. And of course, it is likely that this matter will end up in court. The council, in their own understanding, has dispensed their own responsibility and has hired a vice chancellor. And the federal government has just dissolved both the council and fired the, the VC. So they may approach the court and say, okay, you have powers to dissolve what we have got. But to have done a job that is part of our responsibility, which is hiring a vice chancellor, which we've hired. I don't know whether their sack will vitiate what they had already done. It remains, well, if they decide to go to court, we'll hear what will come out from the court. If World not. Bank and IMF. <coughs> We, we, we know that they have hand in, in terms of you know, loans mm. to government, mm. which all automatically goes down to, to our Nigerian institutions. Mm. But, but there are some uh, conditions tied to these loans. So um, I want to understand, how do you think the, the, the funding cuts or conditions tied to loans you know, impacted the autonomy of Nigerian institutions? Let me say this. I'm wary of anything coming from the Britain Woods institutions, whether it's World Bank, whether it's IMF. Their conditionalities have never in any way helped any less developing countries to emerge. Therefore, if that is the case, there's nothing they will give you. There's nothing they will give you in terms of facility, in terms of loan or whatever, that will positively affect the welfare of your citizens. Because their conditionalities are that it is tied that once you take the loan, you must do A, B, C, D. And those things you do may not be good for your country. They force you to deregulate. Mm. That is privatization. Okay. They will force you to remove subsidies. But if you go to America today, there are critical infrastructures of government that still enjoy subsidies. At times, farmers are given subsidies to either pro produce or not produce a particular crop in a particular year. When there is famine, they release subsidies to cushion the effects of that famine. The most important thing is that Nigeria as a nation should plan how to run their country. We can no longer continue to be tied to the apple springs of the Britain woods and expect to grow as a country because they are deepening neocolonialism. So, so what alternative funding models do you think Nigeria University should Mixture. adopt? public and private public because education is a social commodity Do you understand private okay for instance if you check the recent uh, world university ranking covenant university is a private institution or a faith-based institution they have visibility they are there what has government done to assist covenant universities nothing but the public institutions where government is putting money in did not get close to their ranking. So what do you think has happened? Poor management, corruption. Bureaucratic bottleneck on the part of anything that belongs to government. We don't have altruistic leaders. Mm. People we have are not selfless. Do you understand? If they are, I can tell you that 
most public institutions in Nigeria today, they have all it takes in terms of manpower, in terms of infrastructure, to excel. Check the lifestyle of uh, principal officers in Nigerian universities. If a vice chancellor is passing here, you, you think it's a government that is passing. The yeah, type definitely. of security that go with them. This is a normal classroom teacher. But as soon as he becomes professor, the status changes. To maintain his routine aids alone takes a whole lot of money. And he, ha he will have to look for that money to do that. There's also a faulty recruitment process for Nigerian vice chancellors. Say in, in the UK, in the US. Headship of institution, they call them presidents. That thing, that position is an administrative position. Businessmen run universities overseas because they see it as a business venture. The amount of money available for Harvard as an university today may likely be bigger than all the monies Nigerian government paid to all mm. Nigerian universities. They undertake researches. They get research grants. They innovate. That's what they do. If you go to maybe their faculty of uh, pharmaceutical sciences, or whatever, they provide vaccines. And once they have breakthrough in a particular vaccine, these are vaccines that will be brought in all African countries and they make billions of dollars mm. in it. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chine Duon, former Board of Trustees member, Tet Fund. If you call me doctor, I don't mind. Doctor, yeah, Dr. Chine Duon, yes. thank you for your time. You know, we, we can uh, stop talking about these things and because of time, this is the most we can take for the interview.